Hey there, this video is for all Fiverr sellers who want to track their Fiverr analytics, who want to sell more on Fiverr. My name is Susan Fouché, and thanks for watching my video if you're new to my channel. Please be sure to subscribe, be sure to like, and be sure to leave a comment. This channel is dedicated to all Fiverr sellers who want to grow their business. So I made a recent video that you can actually watch up here that describes what impressions clicks and orders actually mean in Fiverr. And this is the page where we look at our analytics. So to get here, if you're not really sure, you just simply go to my business, down to gigs, that'll get you right there. So if you notice um, on this page, I've got all of my gigs list listed. And within those gigs, I have impressions, clicks, and orders. Now, watch this video that I've got up here at the very, very top that will explain what impressions, clicks, and orders actually means. But I do want to point out that up here in the upper right hand corner, you can change your analytics to reflect if you want to see the last 30 days, the last seven days, the last 14 days, 30 days, which is the default, last two months, or last three months. And all of this information will give you great insights to how your gigs are performing. Now, in the video that I keep on mentioning that I did recently, I noticed that my favorite gig, which is my e-learning gig, was not doing very well. And it was interesting because when I looked at the last 30 days, my e-learning gig had twice as many impressions as the other gigs, but the clicks were way down and the orders were way down. And what that was telling me was that although my SEO was really good on my e-learning gig, in other words, I had a really great title, I had a really great description and really great tags, I was getting found there was something that was preventing potential buyers from clicking on my thumbnails. And that's because it was my thumbnails were not so good. So I went in and redid my thumbnails. And I also noticed that like I didn't have a whole lot of orders either. And so I redid all of my samples. Now, Sometimes orders can also be affected by your price. So I actually lowered my price as well, just to kind of see if that makes any difference. So here's what my e-learning gig looks like now. I'm a voice actor and um, e-learning is my favorite thing to do. It's like very easy for me. It's something I can do quickly without a whole lot of pre-reading, with a whole, whole lot of pre-work. And so this gig really should have been doing a lot better and it wasn't. So I redid my video. I redid all of my samples. I redid all of my thumbnails. They look similar to what they were before, but I just kind of pared it down and I took a lot of the text off of the thumbnails and I just made it more consolidated. I also changed out my PDFs. Um, and like I said, I changed out my samples as well. And the last thing that I did was I lowered my price. It was $20 for 100 words, and I lowered it to 15 So we'll see if that actually did any good. Now, let me show you how I actually track my analytics. So what I'm going to do is go back to my gig analytics, and let's just go ahead and change... Um, the period of time from the last 30 days to the last seven days. Now, this is actually really important when you are tracking your analytics. You want to get kind of like the closest snapshot to what today is holding and the days surrounding today is, is doing. So I recommend making sure that you're looking at just the last seven days. All right, and let's go ahead into my Excel spreadsheet and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so here is my Excel spreadsheet. Now, I just wanna reiterate, you can use a Word document, a Pages document. You can write this down on a piece of paper if you're not really Excel savvy. I like Excel, I know how to use it, but I know it's not for everybody. But what I do in my Excel spreadsheet is I just simply start in cell A1 or at the very top, I just put the date 
of the changes that I made because what we're doing is we're tracking to see if the changes that we made have made any difference and if they've made a positive difference or if they've made a negative difference. The numbers are gonna tell us a lot. So I put in my date that on December 17th, 2022, I changed my thumbnails, my samples, my PDFs, and I added a word dump to my description. I changed my description just a little bit, um, and I lowered my price to $15 per 100 words. So in other words, you just have the date, you have the changes that you made, and then we kind of just go from there. Then what you do is you just have kind of like a column for the number of impressions, the number of clicks, and the number of orders. I do want to um, have you notice that the title of my Excel document is Gig Tracking 7 Day. And that'll just help me know that this was seven days just in case I come back a couple years from now and look and say like, okay, what, what does all this mean? This just helps me know. And down here at the bottom of Excel, you can have these different tabs. And so this tab would be my e-learning gig tab. This tab right here would be like my meditation gig if I were to make changes to my meditation. So then all I do is I simply track it. And I do recommend tracking for at least 20 days before you decide to make any other changes to your gig make the changes and then let them sit for 20 days and track those days. Don't keep on making changes, you know, like don't freak out after five days and go, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. Really take your time, make your changes, and then go ahead and track. And so I have all 20 uh, days subsequently after the changes that I made. Then all I do is I simply type in the impressions and the clicks and the orders that I'm seeing on my gig page. So for example, today is the 22nd of December and I have 986 impressions. I have 33 clicks and I have one order. Now, you can see I've skipped December 21st which is actually okay. We're just kind of trying to get like a range, a 20 day range. So if you skip a day, it's okay. If you skip a couple days, it's okay. You just wanna have a tracking throughout that period. It doesn't have to be every single day. Now, I'm sure you're also noticing something that's maybe startling and that is my impressions are going down. Yes, they are going down. And that is because it is December and this is the slow period of Fiverr. So this was probably like the worst time that I could change, but it's also the slow time for me. And so I had time to make those changes. So I may as well go ahead and track them. So you can see that on December 19th, I had 1.3 thousand impressions. I had 18 clicks and I had two orders. Then on the 20th of December, I had 1.2 thousand impressions, 21 clicks, and two orders. Then if we skip ahead, because I didn't do any tracking for the 21st, for today, for the 22nd, my impressions did go down a little bit to 986 impressions. However, my clicks went up. So this data right here, these numbers are telling me that I did something right. My thumbnails at least are good. And my order is at one. Really, like when my impressions are gonna go down, you know, I can kind of like count on that my orders are gonna go down too. So the fact that like my order has kind of stayed the same despite the fact that my impressions are going down means that I have done something right. So this is how you track any kind of changes that you make. Now, I know this is really nerdy and I know this is like really persnickety, but when we're talking about getting to six figures on Fiverr for crying out loud, this is really important information to look at because we need to know this information. Did our, our thumbnails working? You know, why are the thumbnails not working? Are the samples working? Why not? You know, what do we need to add in, in, in our gig to make it actually sell and to get to money? Because like it or not, we need money to live. And it's really nice to make it off of Fiverr because they do so much for you. You don't have to do any marketing. You don't have to do any invoicing. It's amazing. The work just magically 
rolls in. As long as you've got good thumbnails, samples, PDFs, descriptions, prices, etc. There is a formula to Fiverr, and I call that my six steps to six figures on Fiverr. And to check that out, you can just click right here. This is a video that'll give you that'll give you a comprehensive guideline to those six steps to six figures on Fiverr. Thank you so much for watching. To your success. Bye.